Okay, so I got a piece of chain hooked through onto those two um, threaded rods there. It feels like it can move the battery a little bit, but also it's kind of stuck down in this corner like um, just some sticky tape or something. So I'm just going to have to give that a couple of heave hose, and I think it'll break loose. Okay, I think the moral of the story on that one is uh, make sure you got any zip ties cut first before you have your hands up uh, full of 100 pounds of batteries. Pretty good sized hunk of old battery. It is uh, 14 inches or mm, 36 centimeters long. 9 inches or 23 centimeters across. And... 13 inches or 32 centimeters tall. Weighs about 100 pounds. So on this side, we can see um, where the strap comes off. It's kind of a flat braided strap. And this was up like this. So from the back, the motor controller, you got positive and negative. And the bus bars actually go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then down, there's uh, three levels of cells and then out out here through the other battery pack and comes back so I can't even charge this simply by putting a uh, you know a charger across here um, what I'll have to do is um, route power across the end short it here and then I should be able to charge this at about half of the 125 volt uh, rated voltage And there's the insides. Okay, so this is the rear battery pack. That's got the bracket with all the temperature sensor wires going to it. And then it uh, bottoms out. And then that strap comes back up. It had a couple of gobs of uh, some silicon caulk on it. Looks like that's what was getting caught on here. It's just trying to wiggle past that. And yeah, another glob right in the bottom here too. Um, now we can also have a little bit better view at the motor controller area. I'll probably uh, take that cover off and take a look in there too. Here's the front battery. Maybe now that I've got the other one out, I can get some of that silicon out, make it a little easier to get at this one. Looks like this one has to slide backwards a little bit to get at it anyways. Okay, here's a fun little trick. These uh, Anderson connectors um, you can see the two conductors inside there, and uh, you can actually pull those out. You just need to take a little, I know it's not easy to see, but there's kind of a little spring, and if you push it down with uh, like a small screwdriver, you can actually release the connection from in there. Helps if you kind of push it forwards a little first, and you push down that little tiny spring, and give a pull, and it comes out. So there's actually sort of a little tiny hook on the back of here, and that little metal spring clicks in place. But now, basically these two are just gonna go together, and this will make a complete circuit back to the front of the pack. Okay, so on the far end, I connected those two connectors together. So power should go through here, through three layers down to that cord, to the other half of it, and then back to make one complete battery. And then I should be able to connect positive and negative here. I now have a 56 volt, one amp nickel metal hydride charger hooked up, and my multimeter is set to measure uh, current going into the pack. So uh, 
let's uh, plug in the charger and see what happens. Okay, that's not what I was expecting. And on the charger, the little red light is blinking, so it doesn't look like it's working right all. On this charger, it's supposed to have a red light to indicate charging, and it's just blipping on for just a moment. Um, I can see the current go to just a tiny, tiny bit for just a moment. So I, I think the, uh, the charger here is seeing the batteries as a, hey, I'm not plugged in, I'm not going to be on sort of an effect. So I don't think I'm going to be able to use this charger to uh, get a little juice into that battery pack. Well, back over to the cycle with the, uh, the second battery pack, I just realized something that's kind of neat. On the back uh, corners, there was some of that silicon caulk. Inside here is just like a milk, gallon milk jug plastic. It's got a hole in it. I just pulled the silicon out here, and it looks like, um, so you can see that has no silicon, and over here that does. It looks like what they did when they assemble these is they put the battery in, and then from the outside, they just squirt a little silicon caulk in those two holes, and it's just a snug fit, and then it doesn't go anywhere, which is pretty cool. So I'll have to get this caulk out on the sides, and then I'll be able to slide it back and pull it out. I got that silicon out of the side. Looks like I got this kind of busted loose. Little cables up there to take a look at. On the front half of the battery pack, I slid it back just enough to get it away from this kind of gasket and all. Here's our Anderson disconnect. That's out of the way pretty easy. We see what that's doing. But then we've got these white wires for the, uh, the temperature control, uh, little temperature sensors. And on the back battery, those were uh, those were black. Those were all black wires. And on the front one here, they're all white, which makes them easy to follow. I see them go up, they come back out here, and that's the same style connector as uh, back here for the back half of the pack. Um, and I'm betting that that little temperature board is right here, and that the, those are the little feet just holding it to the frame. I can't really see it or anything, but does feel like there's a card in the back so I think I just need to pinch those and get that off and disconnect this right here. There we go, there's the temperature sensor board and the connector and I'll probably put that ground back so I remember where it came from. Okay, gonna try this again. I'm assuming I'm knowing what I'm doing this time, so... Yay! <sighs> so there we go. Uh, both halves of the battery pack are out of the Vectrix and on the floor and now I can start playing with them. So without the batteries in the Vectrix, we get a view of the battery compartment. It's just a big aluminum box and a whole lot to it. A couple of dabs of uh, silicon to hold the batteries in position. We can see now there's actually a pair of air vents down here. I'll see if I can get the camera in. Right there and right there, air vents. And I do see in here also a little bit of uh, sand, believe it or not, a little bit of grit. So um, if we follow those air vents, wherever the air intake is on here, it looks like it uh, maybe doesn't have an air filter. It might be a good modification. We'll see. Um, and then on the other end, we've got pretty easy access now to uh, the motor controller and all those other things. So I'll check the main fuse and the connections and things like that when I get a chance to uh, pull that cover off. Well, that's it for now. I got the uh, two batteries out, but it uh, looks like I got to figure out how to uh, kickstart them, get a little charge in there. Uh, the two chargers that I had aren't going to work, so I'm going to have to try something else. So uh, subscribe or uh, tune in over at 300mpg.org for the latest on this project. See you next time.